So the Daily Caller is at it again. Government control is not good. We do not have to go to Venezuela to see socialism. We can go to Compton. Government controls every inner city in the country. They do the health care. They do the, the, the education. They do the, the, the housing. They do the economic issues. Everything. They, they, they do the jobs. They do the, well, this, these, we're going to wage controls. They control it already, and look what we have. We don't, this, is, this is the result of socialism. This is the result of poverty, hopelessness, hard drugs, and how those things can affect communities. You know, when a community doesn't feel like it has any hope left, this is kind of what can result. There's also bad city planning going on. There, there's a number of things that are the cause of this. But to just say, oh, socialism is the problem. What are you, trying to repeat uh, McCarthyism or something? Go into every single Congressional Black Caucus member's district and you can see socialism right there. We don't have to go to Cuba. So I don't want that. I want freedom. And so that's why I do what I do. What does freedom have to do with any of this? Or is it just one of those things that you like to say to promote your ideology? My name is Star Parker and I founded and am the president of CURE, the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. I lived so aggressively for the left and for ideas that were destructive that I think I have a passion to help people that were or that are where I was. Those that are right now where I was, I, um, I want to make sure that my light shines for them because I believed all the lies of the left. I believe that my problems were somebody else's fault. I believe that America was racist. I should have mainstream. I believe that um, I was poor because others were wealthy. So I bought that idea of envy and I'm going to do everything I can to destroy them. Look, I'll agree that victim mentality is not a good thing, but you're replacing it with pick yourselves up by your bootstraps and find Jesus. How is that any better? Doesn't make any sense. And. And it didn't work. It doesn't work. And so I just got lost in even setting goals. You just get lost. And I was very lost in living for the day. So getting involved in anything that came up that day. And what came up that day? Criminal activity, drug activity, sexual activity, in and out of abortion clinic, but living on welfare. Look, our welfare programs, some of our safety nets, probably need to be improved. But probably not in the way that you hope. But... You know, we don't need to lock people into poverty by giving them these benefits only if they don't try to make something better of their lives. Because as soon as they try to make something better of their lives, well, they, they lose their medical. They lose any of the benefits they had. If we had a genuine universal health care system, this wouldn't be a problem. But But you're against that because, oh, that's socialism. Well... You know, um, we do need some things that are socialist. Not saying we should become a socialist country, but there are some programs that could help, and healthcare is one of the big ones. You know, when people are going to lose their health care if they dare to try to make something better of themselves, yeah, that, that's a problem. But you think they should just fully pick themselves up by their bootstraps and find Jesus. Yeah, that's not an answer. Trying to force people to become religious and believe in things that don't make any sense is not the answer. Just saying. And it wasn't until a Christian conversion that I just turned, changed my life. That Christian conversion changed my life. Well, congratulations that being converted worked for you. It doesn't work for people who are just non-religious that, that don't buy into this idea of some human sacrifice done a long time ago, absolves everyone of all of their sins if they just believe in this person. I mean, it's like trying to get some... For some people, it's like trying to get them to believe in magical flying unicorns, you know? it, it That's not an answer. Christian conversion isn't the answer. No matter how much you, you claim that it should be. Okay? Religion only works for some people. Unless you believe in forcing it on everyone, and then, and then what is that? Should we live under a theocracy? Is that what you want? Well, no. No, you don't want that. But freedom! Freedom, right? Yeah, freedom to take away people's 
ability to live unless they convert to your religion. No, no, fuck you. When God was introduced through his son, Jesus Christ, I said, okay. And in that, slowly, I was able to start making decisions that were much more healthy. One of the beauties of the biblical worldview is its personal responsibility. It teaches person. You can come up with any excuses you want to, but at the end of the day, at core of having an advocate through Jesus Christ to wash our sins is that it allows you freedom to mess up. That's freedom to you? How about the freedom someone feels when they drop all of that bullshit religion to begin with? They drop the whole idea of the concept of sin. They drop the idea that they're supposed to live their lives according to a specific set of principles um, or burn in hell for eternity. How about, how about if they drop that altogether? How about if they drop the idea of an afterlife altogether? This idea that if you, you know, you do the right things, you'll have a great afterlife. How about the idea that, hey, this is the only life we've got and we better make it a good one, you know? No, 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 no. You, to you, uh, just keep holding on to all those religious views, but then add on to it. Oh, well, as long as you believe in Jesus, he can absolve you of your sins. Well, that essentially means you could do anything. You could kill someone and still be forgiven. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a great belief. No, not really. But that's freedom to you? And you believe in exporting that freedom to others? You believe in cramming that vision of freedom to other people? You think that's the answer? So you don't have to pre-plan, you don't have to collectivism. You can get out there and try to fulfill a destiny, set a group dream and reach for it. And so when I found that out, I started doing just that. I went to school, I got a degree. I graduated high school barely literate. Now I'm on my fifth book. I'm a syndicated columnist. As a gay man who was raised Christian, the only thing that finally allowed me to feel like I could live my life was fully getting rid of the remnants of my Christian upbringing. When I finally realized that I have the choices that I can make for my own life and I'm not going to be judged by some higher power of some sort saying that I need to live according to a specific set of rules. It works differently for different people. I graduated at Barely Literate. You can do it. And that's what I found out. And so it's one of the reasons that I so uh, advocate for the government to get out of the charity business. If we get the government out of the charity business, the only, the primary, I won't say the only, but the primary charity that would be left would be religious places. Now, you probably think that's good. You know, oh, well, you should only get help if you want to, if you want to believe in Jesus. Yeah, fuck you. This is not a good idea to have the government running the lives of the poor. We, we need them to understand freedom. Yes, because in your twisted mind, you think that Christianity equals freedom. Get out of it. Get your, to your destiny. Get on with it. And that where you might make a mistake and that little fence you need, that's what the scripture's for, to give us the guidelines on how to live. Because after all, freedom is living under a particular set of guidelines. And so that's what changed me. And once I found that out, I was on it. And then after the 92 Los Angeles riots destroyed my business that I had built there in LA, uh, I began to work in social activism. That's when I met Newt Gingrich. That's when I started consulting on federal welfare reform. Yeah, apparently we're supposed to look up to Newt Gingrich for some weird reason. After we passed it, I figured, wait a minute, we just told five million women and nine million children what they're not going to do anymore. We better maybe tell them what we should be thinking about. Yes, we should be living our lives according to cherry-picked parts of scripture and believing in Jesus. And that's when I started my organization to say, well, then let's talk about ideas that are going to help fix this. Religion isn't the answer. And this is why people consider the Republican Party to be the party that doesn't give a shit about poor people, about the elderly, about black people, about, about women, about people who are struggling. Because your answer is, oh, well, pick yourselves up by your bootstraps and find religion. No, fuck you.